welcome to Maddie's the Max Vlog Talks. This week I'm going to be talking about <laughs> Box Trolls! Yay! This movie was so much adorbs and creepy and awesome and nice and pretty. I mean, this was such a movie that was completely a labor of love. Like, you could tell from the story to the characters to the design of it, because this is a claymation movie, this was somebody's baby. This was somebody's love project that they wanted to do. This wasn't a studio whipping out a movie so they could sell, like, a product or sell, like, a doll. This was, like, an actual art piece with a story. This movie pulled off something that not many movies can pull off nowadays, which is show, don't tell. For the first, like, I want to say five, ten minutes of this movie, it was pretty much all show, don't tell. There was nobody going, well, the white hats are very important and the box trolls are evil because we believe it this way, which was so good. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. What I love so much about claymation movies is the fact that they're not perfect. I mean, they're perfect, but they're not in like the Disney kind of perfect where everybody's this perfect little shape and they all fit in these little perfect doll shapes. Claymation characters are, they're, they're lumpy and weird shaped and they have odd angles and the big ears and the weird eyes and the odd heads and it's great. The trolls themselves were just so quirky. I loved it. I loved how quirky they were. When you have a character that doesn't speak, or does speak, but speaks in a language that you don't understand, but it's not like speaking a foreign dialect, and you're like, I should understand this. Why don't I understand this? But then when you have a character that speaks like, like Groot, just saying I am Groot, you yourself fill in the blank of what that was supposed to mean. And that's kind of what it was with the box trolls. They were speaking this kind of like... <laughs> and not to mention, the box trolls were adorable. And an actress that I didn't realize was going to be in this movie was Elle Fanning, Dakota Fanning's sister. And I was so surprised by that because when I heard her voice, I recognized it. And I was like, oh. That's Elle Fanning. I like Elle Fanning. I really do. She was fantastic in Super 8. I really liked her in We Bought a Zoo. She was alright in Maleficent, but when you play a character that is so utterly pure, it's really hard to give them depth. But I still feel she did a very good job of this. So when I heard that she was playing this character, I was like, oh, okay, this ought to be interesting. Because I didn't know much about this character, Winifred. When I first saw the trailers and the posters of this character, I thought, oh, she's just going to be the love interest for this odd little boy to find above the world. Kind of like in um, Jungle Book, how at the very end he sees a pretty young thing and follows her out. I thought that's what was going to happen, basically, was that Eggs, the main character, was going to see Winifred and be like, ooh, shiny, follow that. But no, I was pretty much certain that Winifred was going to be such a bland character, just going to be a love interest, basically. That is not what she was at all, and I was so wonderfully surprised by that. And she was just so wonderfully weird! I loved it! The thing that I loved best about her was that she was kind of plump, which isn't something that you see all that often in the leading female characters, even if they are children, like even in Coraline. She was the skinny little stick figure of a character. Winifred was like, she was odd shaped, she was plump, she'd obviously been well fed. You don't really see all that all that much and I really appreciated that the animators did that. It made it seem so much more real and human. For a movie that is about trolls wearing boxes, living in the sewers, it was an oddly human movie. The villain was I don't even know how to describe him. So odd and bizarre and kind of this combination of I want something that is bad for me but I want it because everybody else kind of wants it. I want it! I want it! Kind of deal. It's weird. At the same time kind of makes for an interesting villain. Speaking of the villain, I really liked his henchmen. Mr. Pickles and Mr. Trout and Mr. Krubs? Cabs? Yeah, that. I liked him because he was like, you know, I just want to destroy things. But again, showing not telling is that we didn't have to have the character go, I just want to destroy things. It was in their action and in their body language and in what they were doing that told you about these characters. Such good storytelling. And the animation itself was so cool. I mean, the, the 
it was like, wow. I mean, like, wow. And it really shows a level of dedication to making something happen that you don't really see much because the animators, they have to move them for each second of film. They have to move them 24 times for each second. Oh my God. And that's what was so great. Stay till after the credits on this movie and you will see why I'm talking about. The animators were fabulous. You will see why, but you must stay till the end of the credits. It left me feeling so happy at the end. I mean, it did. I mean, I literally went skipping out of the theater. I'm not even exaggerating. I was literally skipping out of the theater. It was wonderful. So those are all my thoughts on box jewels. What are some of yours? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please watch some of the other ones. Let me know what you think of those. And don't forget to subscribe because it helps keep my stamina up to know that people actually care to watch my videos. So thank you for watching this video. And from now until next time, don't you forget to keep smiling.